and warm welcome to all those that are subscribers to this channel and as well as if you've just sort of popped by and you're new to checking us out as well. I'm Vanessa and I'm filming for Carolyn's Musings on YouTube and Etsy and One Way Journals on Facebook. All the details of all the kits that are available that I mentioned in today's video or any other information that you need to know as in Etsy or Facebook etc. If you just click on the more button under the description everything will be outlined in that. So what I normally try to do is get a whole journal um, up and ready for a video and then go through everything that I've done and created and some new ideas. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to film for a couple of weeks. We're really, really busy. Uh, we've very exciting. Um, two other Persian families were baptized uh, last weekend, which was just so exciting. So we're involved in that. Lots of other celebrations and things going on. And then I was actually quite unwell. So I'm just trying to get my energy back. This is going to be a really big journal and I'm doing it backwards. Normally I sew in all my signatures and then I decorate. Uh, this one I'm actually decorating all the pages first and then I will sew it into the journal at the end. It was way too long to do in one video and I'm definitely not finished so I can't even show you the cover. I haven't got to that stage yet but there's lots of ideas that I'm going to be covering in today's um, in today's video and so this is part one and so what the main kit that I'm using is days of old it's just beautiful in lots and lots of dark blues rich colors uh, very vintagey and there's a little bit of green in there as well which I love so I'm sort of embracing that so just to give you a really quick little idea um, so this is one of the front pages I've done a fussy cart and I actually I'm not going to say too much but I'll give you a quick idea so this here and then this one, I've done a pocket with a flip out to show you with how you can do um, tip in pages. If you haven't thought about sewing in, then you, how you can add pages. This one, how to do a notebook with eyelets. There's a pocket there. This one, cute with the little feathers and a 3D pop up bird. Uh, this is an envelope recut, so there's a little tuck spot there, but we're going to use that idea again. So also included, this one is lots of little flips and things. So we've got this, we've got that, then we've got pocket here, pocket here, then we've got a flip out here with a pocket there, and then we've got a flip here with pockets in there as well. So that's an envelope flip. And then we're also covering how to do tip-in uh, envelopes and how to make those and to make yourself a little template and then add a couple and how to do a waterfall. So there's lots of things we're covering today, lots of ideas. So please stay till the end of the video and hopefully you find this lots of fun. Let's click over to the next section to see what's in all the kits and which ones I'll be using. So here we go, the Days of Old kit. I've printed these on 120 GSM, so it's a bit thicker than your normal photocopy paper. So there's that and that beautiful one on the back. This one, an old telephone and typewriter. And this one with an old vintage car and lamp. We've got an old bath here. And Faith Does Not Eliminate Questions, But Faith Knows Where to Take Them. That's by Elizabeth Elliot. So there's a quote on that one. And then an old beautiful clock. And so I printed this page quite a few times. So this one is blank so that we can write within the journal. Uh, and then this one, which is beautiful, the envelope and the little writing set. And this is one of the backing papers or journal pages and then this one with an old desk with a typewriter and what you are is God's gift to you uh, what you become is your gift to God so that's beautiful and then this stunning print here now this one I did print on vellum I'm having problems with my um, printer again with vellum so it's actually done this but I don't know I, maybe I like it that it's um, old so um, where the ink hasn't come out on this part uh, so I might use that um, so I just wanted to show you what that looked like <clears throat> in the vellum and then there's this one and at that page again I've got some black on there it's okay we can cover it up uh, this one and then that fantastic one on the back and here 
and I've just noticed I've got lines. So I've got an Echo Tank 2850 and you've got to watch when you're doing your printing that you've got to clean the head and that's the only downfall with this printer is that sometimes I print a whole bunch of papers, go back and then notice it's got lines in it which means the print head needs to be cleaned unfortunately. But there's that one and then we've got this writing page and with this one this is gorgeous this image and then this with the writing one again uh, this one so this is a collage page and I've put this one on the back so there's two collage pages front and back and then this one is another collage paper and I've put that backing or journal page on that one okay now let's have a look at the ephemera so we've got these really big tags here and I have printed these on two, I can feel like 250 GSM. I wanted them to be a bit thicker. I haven't printed on the back because I'm intending to back them and then possibly stitch around the edges. So there's no backing on these, but large tags, large ones again, large ones again with some great fussy cuts. And these are pockets and then this piece sits on the top of that to create a pocket and that's the backing of the pocket. And then these are fantastic. And then some more. Uh, these are on 160 GSM, so they're pockets. And then there's another pocket there. I love this. It actually reminds me of old um, it's English, it looks like here. I think but it reminds me of my Dutch heritage my father is from Holland from the Netherlands and so that blue and white reminds me of that here we've got some great um, labels here so good old times times of your classical golden times yesteryear bygone memory lane good old days way back when classic memories antiquity and ancient times time imm immemorial old lang sign times past days gone by former times ancient history so they're great uh, labels then we've got an envelope which i do need to go back and put a backing on that one same with this one i need to put a backing on those now um with this kit most of it is in dark blue but there were some greens and things in there and so i've pulled out another kit which is called the green botanical kit and so i might incorporate some of these pages in there as well the victorian blue kit is another one which would look go really really well with this uh, journal but i thought i might do something different let's see how we go with it so these are the pages front and back so it's called the green botanical kit so there we go that's beautiful lace paper there there's some dotted lines and another lace there here we go this actually it says genesis the first book and then that one and then we have this beautiful image here. I haven't printed on the back of that one yet, but I have printed these a couple of times. Now I wanted to show, uh, if you didn't want it to look too white and you want it to have more of that old uh, feeling, because this is days of old, I've printed this on tea or coffee dyed paper. So that pattern, that lace pattern, instead of it being white, I've printed on that. And then that's the difference. So you'll see here <clears throat> how that looks quite different printed out okay uh, and this one here is what it looks like printed out if you put it on tea or coffee dyed paper it looks like that okay and then vellum I'm having issues again but I wanted to show you what that looked like on vellum this is actually a green pinstripe um, vellum that I have and so let me just show you that's what it looks like printed and then that's on a green vellum and I printed that front and back and then let's have a look at the ephemera with this uh, green botanical uh, kit so there we go a child of the king so we've got some tags a bit folio I haven't as I said printed on the back of these there we go and so we can fold that card over to create like a little booklet notepad and then there's a really large pocket there and then some large tags there we go an envelope and some more bits and pieces with whale tail and then some corner pockets another seed pocket here with fussy cuts and then we have some pockets in here there we go 
So I know they're quite bright. I've got some ideas on how I might dull them down a bit, which I can put vellum and stitch vellum over the top of them, or I can use, I've got so many uh, tea bags that have been used and then I've let them dry. And so putting those over the top can really dull down the color and make them look a little bit more vintagey as this is the days of old kit. Um, I'm also going to probably put in some of these papers, which is the vintage Bible pages. So all the links will be in the um, description box. This is called the Botanical uh, KGV, so King James Version Ephemera. It's a small kit. There are only a couple of pages in their ephemera kits, but I've pulled out two. I thought I might use these. Um, look, I've got the lines in here again. Ah, my printer. Okay, so there's this one, which is an ephemera pocket. I put that on the back and then this one those two are from that so I'll possibly use those and then from the King James Version Faith Ephemera pack I've used that kit a lot I pulled out this green envelope which I might stick in there and then that's a collage paper in that kit and put it on the back and then that one's just a blue paper from that one as well so I just wanted to let you know if I throw in a couple of extra things I'll always try to mention where I've got them from I, I couldn't help myself I went back to Victorian blue and I printed off a Eight of the pages so I'll just quickly show those to you um, so there's so many more beautiful pattern papers but I just chose some of them that I could include in this journal so definitely if you didn't want to use the botanical uh, green the green botanical kit then this beautiful Victorian blue will look great as well so I'll choose different papers and things to put in and try and do a bit of a variety so there you go and um, I'll see how I'm going with ephemera but I'm probably going to go back to Victorian blue and print out some of those pages as well to add in ephemera into the journal so I have a bit of an idea now with uh, journal pages I have done in and I'll can't remember what video it was. Uh, it was in one of the journals where I've cut out a doily and placed that inside uh, the page, which looks really cool. So that's an idea for this journal. But I had an idea for this and I thought, oh, I've already started. I better start filming to show you how I've done it. Uh, so get a piece of, so this is my, it's one of the collage pieces. Uh, so it was like that folded in half and then on the other side I printed this pattern from the green botanical and then what I did was I tore the page and so I'm just going to very lightly ink the edge you can leave it if you don't want to ink it okay so I have deckled edged uh, all my pages I have cut them out and I've just used some deckle scissors to do that rough sort of vintage edging but I haven't inked them yet but I'm going to sew this so wish me luck because I'm not an expert at sewing but we're going to give this a go um, so I've cut a piece of vellum where I printed this on the front and the back this was on green and what I wanted to do is just to be the same size as this page it's going to hang over a little bit that's fine I can cut that off later and I'm just going to get some um, like sewing pegs and just do it a fraction so I don't because I'm going to be sewing into the signature there I want this piece of vellum to come if you can see just slightly off the edge maybe what up um, an eighth of an inch off either side and I'm just going to peg those down so that I can keep it straight and then what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and then sew down here so this vellum is sewn and then what I'll do is ink this bit and then I will peg that down and I will sew down here as well and I'm not sure if I'll be able to fit another piece of vellum I'm going to try and tear it as well so I'm going to go do that um, go to the sewing machine and then come back with you once it's finished hopefully it works I couldn't find my sewing pegs and I meant clips, my sewing clips. So I've just used some um, paper clips instead. So I have sewn down. Now I am going to change my sewing machine over to a dark brown thread. But for this one, I've just kept it as cream. And so if I bring it up, you might be able to see I've done a straight stitch and then a zigzag, straight stitch, zigzag. And then you might be able to see it better on the back. So that's through the vellum there. And so I have just moved it along and re-put these 
paper clips in there just make sure that when you do that that it's straight on the back and that you've got this amount here so that it's straight and so now I'm going to sew down here and come back to you when it's finished so I finished that torn those and sewn so if you can look um, you'll be able to see the stitching there and then on this side with the rest of this vellum I've just torn to make a pocket there and stitched uh, directly onto the paper only because vellum can be a little bit tricky with glue um, so I've just stitched that with a cream stitch so you can see it on that side I might cover it up I might leave it um, and then I'll probably switch over to a darker thread um, and then found this within that green botanical kit and that actually fits in um, really well there I might reduce it slightly but there we go so that one's done the only other thing I've done is uh, this will probably go in front of this one and I have, because I had a reprint, I have just, if you can see, I've just decided to do a 3D, um, so some mounting tape underneath. Otherwise you can glue on the top and use that as a tuck spot, but I've done that as 3D there. And then here I love having secret pockets where it's sort of seamlessly, you can't really see there's a pocket there. So um, yeah, I've just glued that on the top. So that's a little pocket on that one. What else have I done? I did go through with all of these pages and I, uh, because I had already printed them and they were white, which I absolutely love and I know I'll use them in another journal, but to fit in with this one and to seamlessly fit in with all the other pages, I just went over. So if you have in your, within your collection, you might have some neutral backing papers. So tea dye, um, it's winter here. I don't have a lot of my tea dye. I should have done more in winter, but I use the uh, summer, but I use them all up. So you could print directly onto some tea or coffee dyed paper because I'd already printed these out. I just ran them through the printer again with like a coffee dyed neutral background. So it's just sort of given that color. Uh, and then I've just reprinted that there and created a pocket there. And then this one, I've just cut around the daisies and made that a pocket on that one and so all of the pages have got deckling decal edge um, and then the other thing I wanted to do was uh, this one there was something on the bottom that I've already cut out and I didn't they already had coloring on it so I didn't need to put it through the printer so this is an alternative if you've got some pieces left over and you're not sure um, uh, if you want to, you know, darken them up a little bit. So what we can do is stick some tea bag stuff over the top. So these are dried out. I'm just going to try it with some glue stick and then cut them out. Um, you might want to use some, you know, watered down PVA glue or some decoupage um, glue. You might want to do that. So I will just run that over there. And then let's throw that on top so that will capture those and then we'll cut them out and it's just given us that vintage look okie dokie let's have some fun with some envelopes so I've got a bit of an um, idea to put into a journal and so this is what we're making so it looks like a but I'm going to show you a template on how you can make a template for these in the future so it looks like a junk mail envelope but I've just used a printable so what I've done is I've got two here and I've used the collage papers and then I've printed on the reverse of both of them Okay, so what it's got is it's got a fold here so that if you um, want to add an envelope and you haven't sewn it into your signature, but you want to what they call in the junk journal community is a tip in something that you want to be able to how, do, how can I put an envelope in? Um, after I've bound the journal in say it's that's that sort of thing. So what I was thinking was you could put two together and it can look like a waterfall effect. So you put one under the other and then you flip one and then you flip the next one. So that's what we're going to make. <clears throat> so I've already put this one together and glued it down and put acetate and cut it. But this is how I'm going to show you how to make it. So I have actually made a template. 
So whoops, that's upside down. So what you'd want to do is, uh, now you could do this in acetate if you want so you can see through it. I've done it in card because I want to actually be able to fold it up and then put it into my template. Uh, I've got a journal folder thing that I put templates into. Okay, so you're going to want to start with a piece of card that is 10 inches long and 8 inches height. Now you can make them any size you like. This is just what I'm going to go with for this journal to make sure that it fits within the pages. Just use a, you know, a ruler and a stylus tool or a bone folder. And then what you're going to want to do, hopefully I'm in camera, is once you've got your piece cut out, you're going to want to score at three and a half inches there. And then you're going to want two little spines these are your flaps so it's three eighths of an inch and three eighths of an inch again so if you want to write this down or take a screenshot hopefully that you can see that you want to score at three and a half inches and then the next measurement is going to be three and seven eighths and then the next one is four and two eighths and then your last one is going to be at eight and two eighths. Okay, so here we've got three and a half inches. We've got three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Then uh, this one, I didn't measure how much that one was. I don't think I've written that one down. And then this last bit is one and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so once we've done that, then we want to turn it around and we want to do the sides of our envelope. And so we want to score three eighths of an inch that side and three eighths of an inch that side. Then what I've done is I've measured one inch from these score lines here. I've measured in one inch here, one inch here, one and a half inches there and one and a half inches there and drawn my cross light. So what I'm saying is one inch there, you can draw a line in pencil, do it that way, one that way, then one that way, that one that way. And then you can get this and your steel ruler, otherwise you don't want to cut your plastic ruler, a steel ruler and then cut yourself a window. So if you're better with scissors, sharp scissors, you can do that. I find it easier to do. I'm sorry, I call it a Stanley knife. It's a cutting knife. Um, and that's how you get your little window. Okay, so there's my template. Now, what I thought it would be easier than showing on the patterned envelope what patterned paper, be easier for you to see me do it on this. So what we want to do for our flaps for our, for our envelope, we want to mitre this here. So we've got releasing that. So there's one flap. And we want to do this one on this side and do it in an angle like that. And then we want to cut away the rest of this section here. So you might want to do that with a cutting knife or you might want to do it with a pair of scissors. So I'll just release these here. Okay, so you want to go all the way up to that line. Okay. Oops. Cut that one enough. Hang on. There we go. And then here we want to cut up to this line. There we go. And then we want to do the same on the other side. So we cut all the way up to the one, two, three, the third line. There. And then this one we want to cut up to that first line. Okay, there we go, there's that. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so on this one, I've already folded and scored. Um, so as I said, you score all of them. It's up this way. <laughs> okay, so this is my template. Now I can just go and cut, cut that now. I can see where it is. But um, there we go. 
that's my template there. So if you just want to draw around it in future, then um, and what you can do is use, uh, where's my pen? What you can do is if you make yourself a template, you can then go and just pencil mark here and here on both sides. And then you've already got your score um, marks there and you just score a straight line. And that's the beauty of having a template. Okay, so on this one, I just need to, I'll speed through as I cut, cut this. So this, the flap needs to be, the smaller flap needs to be on this side, so it's up the right way. Now instead of having to measure in to measure my window, I've now got my template that I can stick on top. Just make sure it's even around all the edges. And then, I uh, don't know where my pencil is, but I'm just going to use some pen. And then we can draw the window. Oops. There we go. And then I've got my knife that I can then go around. I'm going to go to the left of that line and cut that out. might want to keep that you never know you could collage with that later all right so there we go we've got our window so now uh, what I want to do is ink around the edges I don't do what I just did I can't believe I did that I've not done that before but I cut all the way through um, my lines need to be a bit wider I think I looked at that line and cut through there that's okay I'm going to stick that down um, so when you if you like to ink and get some definition you might want to do your window first there we go. and then fold and ink around here now you've got a fold here a fold here and a fold here I only ink I don't want to define this one here so I'm just doing the center one so I'm just going to ink that and then I want to go around my edges. Okay. Um, and we're going to fold those flaps in. Okay, so if I, I folded those, yes. So let's ink that. And then on this side, oops, that one's just a Lightening up a little bit, and then I want to. Uh, I've got my corner rounder, and I'm just going to do those on the four corners. Okay, there we go, and then just run a bit more ink. Okay, and then. I have got my piece of acetate, so you could do a very uh, see-through piece of uh, vellum, anything you'd like. So I'm just going to glue this down with art glitter glue. I think this works really well. And where's that cut? That cut is there. I'm just going to run a bit of glue over the top of that, and that should be okay. And then around the edges of this. just a thin thin piece of glue you're going to want to use a strong hold glue um, on your acetate okay so that's stuck down and then what we want to do is this is the bottom flap and so fold it in your side pieces there and have I inked around everything I have just do a bit more here <clears throat> on this side and then if you want to you can ink that bit where it folds over 
Okay, so instead of gluing on here, this piece is actually shorter than this one, so it's better to glue on this side. And what you want to do is when you fold it up, you want the middle line. So there's a fold here and a fold there. You want the middle one, and that's where you want to fold it in half and then glue this bit down here and down here. Okay, and then make sure you've got that right on the edge <clears throat> and stick that down and that one as well. Okay, so that's how easy it is to make these type of DL envelopes, the long ones, and how to make it with a window. And so what we have here is a fold. You can fold it both ways just to give it a bit of flexibility okay so what we have is do I have a page so what you could do I was thinking that uh, one of these would look fantastic if you ever sell your journals or give your gift your journals to anybody what you might like to do is um, put in a book I don't know if you've heard of it before but a book journalers uh, letter so it's a letter from the bookmaker the journal maker to the recipient uh, so uh, I know Carolyn's um, designing and helped write one a Christian version of that uh, to put into that so if this was the front inside of your journal this could be really lovely here where you could put the bookmakers letter in there and then you have if you wanted to what you do is you glue down this bit and you glue that down to the page. Now say if you put it that far from the edge, then if you wanted to put another one, you butt it up there like that. And this is the measurements that I've got so it won't hit the center of your fold. If you can see that there, that's where you're gonna sew in your signature. So you've still got a bit of space there. So you could fit the two in there and then you've basically got flip one flip two with two envelopes and you can always put a pocket or something behind okay so they're those two envelopes uh, and then this one because uh, this image has sort of been cut this one really doesn't matter this one here I thought that I would probably decorate um, and put something like this over the top especially if this would be <clears throat> like the bookmaker's letter to the recipient I thought this image would be really cute and the reason I've used this as well is because it's an off cut so the next envelope idea we've got here and so with this page it's this one and so what I've done is printed it again inked around the edges and just going to glue down the three sides here so when I've done the reprint I've just cut out this section and just going to glue that on top here stick that down and that's created a pocket in there so that we can put tags and things in so when I cut this out I had this image left on the page so I've cut it along there so you can see here and I'm just going to glue this down and just sort of put this as a fussy cut that sort of little bit creeps over that window um, just to decorate so you can decorate however you like so if you don't use the collage paper and you use a pattern paper uh, you could pretty up around the edge of the window with fussy cuts and things like that okay so let me just pop that down there so I think that's quite cute now my printer was running lines through my printout so there's a faint one there I try to color it in with pencil to try and hide that a little bit that's a little bit crooked there that's okay I'll fix that one up so anyway there we go there's our two windows envelopes for that and then on this one we've got a little pocket here and then on this side this beautiful bird so with this double print I 
uh, cut out this bird so they could do 3D. Now, if you just glue the top bit, you could use it as a top tuck. It's really great in our journals to put things up the top because uh, we tend to get a little bit heavy down the bottom with our pockets and things like that. So definitely, if you wanted to use it as a pocket, you can. I've decided that I don't want to... Um, do it as a pocket I just want to do it as a sort of 3d stick out and I'm just looking with that there I'm going to cut off this part of the tail here and I've stuck a feather down underneath here on top of that that tail that's sitting there I've just added some feather stuff so I thought that could be really cute let me just pull this up so I can see a little bit better we want to make sure the beak is lined up oh did I show you it's just got mounting tape on the back um, hopefully I'm lining that up there we go lining that up And the feather is forming the bit of the tail there. Hmm, I don't know if I want that underneath, whether I think that looks weird with the tail. Maybe that should be sitting up. I might get another a tail and, um, sorry, I might get another feather and put that at the top and just fluff that up because that's stuck down to the page so it's a little bit flat and I want it to be a little bit higher. So what I might do is... Uh, Put this back down instead of cutting it off put that down and then do the feather over the top of it um, I had glued it underneath here thinking it would tuck in because of the stem of the feather there but I still think it looks a bit flat so we're going to fix that okay so I'll go back and do that in a minute uh, now the other idea with these pockets so you could on that page as I said cut out that bit and created a pocket however Gina uh, McBee from our Facebook group had this fantastic idea that she showed into the Facebook's um, community group there and what she's done is she has printed and cut these four times so that's what I've done as well and then inked around did I ink around the edge of them all? I did. And so when you cut this section out here, what she had done was left a side bit here like a tab and then a side one on this side. Silly me, I went and cut it off. I wasn't thinking and it's okay. If you keep it on there, when you put these back to back, the two pieces will give you more stability for your flap. I didn't really want to have to print the page again because um, I've already done that four times. So I'm going to leave it. But if you want a bit more stability, have a tab on that side as well. So I've just scored down there and um, inked that around. And so what we want to do is ink uh, just the sides here, not up the top because that's going to create another pocket. Okay, and then we're going to put... Now I've done white on the back, and if you print something on uh, the back of that paper, you won't be able to see. Now they don't... Unless you have got the capability to mirror an image, which I can do on my computer, I just forgot and didn't do it. If you mirror an image, it might just be a little bit more even, but it's okay. There's a little bit of white there and we can just cut that off or you can ink them. Um, so I'm just going to round that there and here there was a little bit here. So just do that. Because I've cut the edge again, I'm just going to ink, ink that there and then ink here where I've cut that there. Okay, and then what we want to do is put one of these on either side. So we'll do like we did on the page where you ink three sides. I'm just going to speed this up. So what we've created now is there is a pocket here 
and then a pocket here and then there's also a pocket here so if you want you can ink the inside or you could put um, some book page or something like that if you don't want to have the inside white I will do something with that so before you glue them together you might want to um, yeah put some book page down there scripture anything you like just to cover up the white before you glue those two these bit sides together so how do you put this into a journal so let me just get this one here so what you can do say this is your journal page and before you stick it in you could have a single page that you've printed out just pretend that's single and then you could put this flap here and glue it to the back there and then glue that down onto a page in your journal so you can do that or if you reverse it that way you could do that there and then glue that and then you won't see the back or if you are putting this into your journal you could actually glue it there and then on this side you could run some lace or some washi or something like that over the top and then you don't see this where you've attached it to the page okay and then you've got yourself a flap so I'm not sure where I'm going to put this in the journal yet but you'll see that when I do the final flip through so just wanted to thank Gina thank you so much for that idea it's really great to add into your journal this is a double page here and what I've done is I've got this fantastic fantastic um it's handmade paper I've had it for like 10 or 15 years and it's got a gold fleck in it so I love this it's like a Japanese paper with texture when you rip it so I've just ripped the sides uh, and basically folded two halves into the center to create two side flaps and then what I've done is you'll see here where it's going to be sewn into the signature I've just glued a little bit here and a little bit here to create a pocket and then I don't know if I'll keep these matching together or whether I'll put an alternative tag in but that's just an idea to do that it will be sewn in the signature here and then on this one it's created a little flap not sure what I'm going to do with this on this side but that's just a starting point for that this one here is a double page and so this is the one uh, where I said that I've made a you know a secret sort of pocket there and then one with the daisies there so what I've done is on the reverse the little flip envelope I stuck it to the back of this page cut it down a little bit glued it to the back of this and then glued this onto this double page so that's created a I'm so sorry for sniffing I have got a really bad time with allergies at the moment uh, so that's a little flip there and then on this side I tore it down uh, and then how gorgeous is she and then tore mat for this side and then I've just got an old him amazing grace here tore the sides and then just um, put a little notch in there so that's created just a, this was an off cut um, so just a little journaling card and this was from another hymn I've just sort of ripped that and put that on the front there so it's just a basic little journal card in there so that's going to be a flip that way and then a flip that way on that side now on this side so we've got that in the middle this side I haven't inked my edges oh and when I'm talking about decal edges in case you have that you're new to the channel I've had these for absolutely years they're Fisker's brand but when I mean decal they're like this so it's just a really rough edge but I also have a pair which is Victorian which is more of a precise little pattern so they're great scissors to have um, to sort of age the papers they still need to be inked around the edge so what I've done is I've got a double again and what was printed this one was actually printed on T coffee dyed paper so that one's on the center and that's going to be great writing space so this side here I'm going to glue down onto here and then this was one of the little pockets um, and this was from I'll put it in the description box but I did at the beginning of the video show there were two little pockets that I pulled out of the King James Version ephemera. I don't know if it was botanical ephemera, but I'll put that um, into the description. This side is going to be stuck under here, under there. So glue here, and that's gonna go in under there, and then I'm gonna glue these together. I've already cut out the center and then put acetate behind. So what I need to do is just glue this side here. To close it okay. 
Okay. You don't want to put too much glue because you don't want it to spill over onto the inside and then, you know, um, so you won't be able to open it. So I got something just to make sure that there's nothing sticking in there. Um, this one will be glued under, but I want to put the thinnest amount of glue right here to close it. Sorry if my thumb is in the nail in, in the way. I'm just trying to get a very th oh I've got a bit wobbly, but that's okay. I'm just trying to put a very thin bead of glue there to close it. There we go. It's gone over a little bit. That's okay. And then I want to glue this side because this is going to go in underneath the page. So all these blues and greens look really lovely together. Um, so you don't want it right on the crease. You want it to be able to bend. So just before you get to that crease line is where you want to glue it down. And then make sure that it still can flip. Okay. And I've just torn the edges of the paper with my ruler, so it's not a sharp edge. It's not a deckled edge, but it's not a sharp edge either. Okay, so now I can glue the back of this onto that page. Okay, and then just flatten that as best I can. And if you want to do it on that side, it's not going anywhere okay and so there's a little pocket and then these were the two little cards on there and that's coming away there so I'm just going to glue that back um, and what I probably uh, I've got in the lounge I've got the heater on this is my craft room and it's quite cold in the lounge room I've got um, my little corner rounder so I'll go just do a little the smallest little one on the corners there which would be good and ink around the outside and then that can go in there a little birdie in that side and the butterflies on the other one you could put it the other way around so what we've got is when this will be sewn into the signature here so we get to this page I'm not sure what I'll do here I might put a tab on the outside flip here writing flip here little pocket then we can flip here for this page pocket pocket over to here um i'll put a tab or a um, paper clip or something to keep that closed and then you open there's a pocket a tag there open and then this flips out and as we said before there's a pocket here a pocket in between and a pocket there um, and what i did do was i did line them you can see that's got hymn paper on either side so in case you have a look in there it's not stuck quite okay so that's that one there so i've done that one and then this one here okay so this is a double page and I've not done this with a notepad before but I decided to put two eyelets in here and uh, I've just torn this piece down once again it's just been torn with a ruler and then I put a little um, doily off cut here and then these papers here I had lots of this blue blue and white rose paper from a wedding years ago so I've just run that through with the um, you can because it's already printed paper, I just ran it through with a neutral backing thing on it. Um, I'm not sure, it's probably a bit dark. I probably would have preferred it a bit lighter, but that's okay. That's a little pad, so I've done that. Now what you can do is you can thread some ribbon through and tie a bow here, or on the reverse, it's going to have this. I don't mind that being there, and you could thread the ribbon through and do a nice little bow. Um, the reason I'm not going to is because I've got the butterfly right here at the top and so I don't really want it to interrupt with the image but that would look really lovely if you want to put ribbon or a bow and then on this side this gorgeous um, pocket with the backing I've just glued this one on the three sides at the front inked around the edges here I put a little bit of a, one of Carolyn's vintage doilies there and this was a doily from my stash that I've just put in behind and then that's created sort of a backdrop for this one and then there's a pocket space there and a pocket one here 
Okay, so that's that. Um, haven't decided what I'm going to do on that page. But this beautiful image, she is just gorgeous. And her skirt that billows out down the bottom of here. So I really wanted to see her again. Carolyn, she's such a gorgeous um, image in this kit. So I've enlarged her and then fussy cut her out. So that's what I've done here. Isn't she gorgeous? So I've just made her a little bit bigger and then did a fussy cut. And then what I've done here was I really liked this image as well. So I have cut this out as a tag shape and then just did a scalloped edge there. And I am going to stick her here on the corner and I've rounded the corners here and going to, she's going to be a little pocket. So let me just glue this down here. Okay, just a thin bead of glue around the edge and the bottom. Okay, just make that fit there. There we go, and her shoulder just fits right there on the edge. There we go, isn't she gorgeous? Okay, how far did I glue up? Up to there. Okay, so she's really lovely. And then what I did was, uh, sorry, on the back, I've got that print out there. And then I've just ripped some paper and then put a doily on the top of it. Now that actually is a pocket on the back there. You could tuck something little in there or just leave it as is as a decoration on the back. Now what I've done is I wanted to make two little tags to go in here, just rounded little corners on the bottom and created those to sit in here. Now, I wanted to mention what these were. So Carolyn has um, a beautiful kit. I don't know how I hadn't found it any earlier, but it's called, uh, I think it's, I'll put it in the description box, but Lace Papers. Oh my goodness, they're gorgeous. So I've just printed out some of them, not all of them, and I've already, as you can see, cut out bits and pieces. Um, so I'll just quickly flick through these. So there's some um, the coffee colour. There's quite a few of these and some that have sort of got a greyish blue sort of tone in the background. And then greens. I've printed those off to, with the green blue in this kit. And then there's one that's more neutral. So that's great as a backing. As you can see, there's sort of a greyish blue in there as well. And then this one's more of the sort of coffee colour. There, this one as well hang on how we've got this one and then this one okay these just fit there i mean there's so many kits that i could put within this journal i don't know where to stop um but these are fabulous there's also some really gorgeous pinks in there as well i didn't print them um with this kit but they're just they're divine they're really gorgeous pink ones all right so um so what i've got is just these little tags that are going to sit in there. I have individual um, pearls but I think they're all going to be a little bit too big whereas this one's like where you can do a strip of pearls and these ones are a bit smaller so I'm going to try try that. Let's see if it's too big for her earring. It looks a bit big doesn't it? Let's see with her necklace. Um, I don't know if we should just leave one in the center there or whether we should do a strip of pearls there around her neck. Whoops. Oh dear, I should really have tweezers. There, I can pull these off, so if we don't like it, that's okay. And then we could put a couple there. Now, is that too much? What do you think? Okay, so if you don't mind, um, because this is going to be at least a two-part series because I can't get everything done in this video, um, put a comment down below whether you like all of them or whether, um, please come off, or whether you just prefer, oh, I have not ripped her. 
or just the one in the center. What I can do is there is a little secret pocket here. So I could put, even though that's 3D there, I could put that one in there for that page. There's that. Um, or I can create a side pocket or something and I can have her instead of there. I could have it on this side. Um, if I did a pocket that way to cover her face, so maybe a pocket this way and have her sticking out. Or I could do a bottom pocket. And that one could be on there. So let me know what you think about that. Okay, so I think this video I'm going to edit and put all the little segments together. And I think, yeah, that's probably enough for this one. Um, but then I've got lots of other ideas I'm hoping to put in the next section where I'll be able to uh, put it all together into a journal. And so that you can have a look at some of those ideas. Okay. Oh, I found uh, some better pearls. So I think I only had two of these little cream ones left. So that's gone there. And then I had these tiny little green ones. So there's one for her ring and one for her earring there. So that's what I've decided to do. And then I added some lace on the top of this pocket here and then some of this lace on top of that one again. So she might sit in there or I might put her somewhere separately. So that one's done. And then I just thought I'd let you have a little sneak peek. I loved this image so much that I've blown her up to be bigger, just like the other one. And I'm going to use her for the front cover because uh, I have a bit of an idea of doing something as a necklace for her on the front cover. So just give you a little sneak peek. That's what I will be doing in the next video, hopefully. Um, so there we go. Uh, all finished this section because uh, I need to get it uploaded. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed some of the little uh, new ideas and trips and flicks and envelopes and things like that in this video. So I wish you all the very best for the week ahead. God's richest blessings and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.